I will admit, it's getting to be that time of year we're going to have to hear me talk about other teams just a little bit on this channel. And that's because, again, and I've talked about this, it's list season and we get to talk about it. But I think I love this time of year as a Lions fan because while part of me just doesn't care, the other part of me absolutely cares what the national media's perception of the Detroit Lions is. I think all of us love the moniker uh, Detroit versus everybody. I think all of us also love when the national media is starting to recognize us. I think a lot of people were very happy when we got, what, five primetime games last year and then another five this year, not counting Thanksgiving. Like, I think people recognize, like, all right, people are starting to realize how good the Detroit Lions are. Now, I did a video on it just a couple days ago, but I don't think there's still enough love for Jared Goff and Dan Campbell. And there's a national perception there's a national perception from the media that I think that Ben Johnson, that they think Ben Johnson is the reason for all the success that this team is having. I don't think the national media understands what I have been preaching from this channel, which is very simply, this is not just a Ben Johnson offense. He is not continuing to stay because it's fully his and he thinks he has a bad quarterback. He wants to stay because Dan Campbell's helping him. He wants to stay because Jared Goff is a good quarterback. So naturally, when Bleach Report comes out with kind of a cool list, which is a list of ranking the NFL's best head coaching and QB duos ahead of the 2024 season, I need to talk about it. All right? So... Which teams have the best coach tandems? They will rank top 10 with a heavy emphasis on joint success between the coach and signal caller. In addition, our rankings also factored in individual accolades and statistics for the player and coach. For example, a lead skipper who has a one coach of the year or an MVP winning quarterback can impact the order. All right, so let's look at it. Number 10, Mike McDaniel and Tua Tagovailoa. And of course, you're wondering to yourself, are Goff and Campbell going to show up here, right? Because I just talked about how, I, and I don't know if you've seen the video, uh, but the last video I did two days ago, it talked about how there was one national writer that said Goff's contract was horrible, so I can't endorse the offseason. We're paying him like he's a top 10 quarterback, and he's not. Not true. It's just not true. And I blew a hole through that thing in every way from every which way from Sunday. But anyways, Tua and McDaniel, two years together. They've built some momentum, but they don't have any playoff wins. I agree. That's why they should be down there. All right? They're a sending team with an electric offense, unless they're playing a decent defense. Like, I'm just going to go out and say it. Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts. Now, for all the love that Ben Johnson gets nat nationally, people are still, every once in a while, I'm telling you, giving too much credit to Nick Sirianni instead of where the credit actually belongs. All right? And so he's... That credit is gone. That credit is Shane Steichen, and he's in Indy. And last year, it started rough and got worse for the Eagles offense. With the talent they have on that offense, it should have been significantly better. So they belong there at nine. Number eight, Mike McCarthy, Dak Prescott. Again, Dak probably had his best regular season in his, in his NFL career last year. But again, no playoff games. All right, no playoff games. Then seven, here we go. Dan Campbell and Jared Goff. Now, I don't hate it. Like, I don't hate the ranking, so let's see who's ahead of us. But first, let's see what they have to say. Goff have only made the playoffs once in three seasons together. Well, yeah, the first year we did have a 35 to $50 million cap hit, thanks to Stafford. But they have strong momentum on their side. As McCarthy and Prescott enter what could be their final year in Dallas, the Lions just signed Campbell and Goff to extensions. Detroit's decision to reward the head coach and quarterback shows the team's faith in Campbell and Goff to continue their ascension. I, I'm questioned. Uh, thank you. Campbell and Goff helped lead the Lions to their first division title in, since 93. All right. And then it talks about promoted tight end. See, here we go with Ben Johnson again to offensive coordinator, which changed things. And then finally, they did say there was an appearance in the 2023 NFC Championship game that may be their first step to their Super Bowl window. So this is the first of all these that we're seeing like that that um, ascension. Sean McDermott and Josh Allen. All right. For all of the success they've had together, they've never been beyond that championship game, which I find to be very interesting. But yes, 
I'm absolutely going to give them the nod over Campbell and Goff because they've been doing it for longer. That makes sense. Same with Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow. However, and I know we haven't seen them fully healthy, I have a unique Joe Burrow take. I'm just going to admit it. Don't let the orange I'm wearing fool you, all right? I think Joe Burrow is very good. I don't know if I ever saw a quarterback more mentally and physically ready to play in the NFL. He just seemed like the complete package. But the offense in Cincinnati has been decent, but never great. Like, and, and go look up the stats and prove me wrong. It's always been okay under Burrow. All right, but they win in the postseason. They win in the postseason, so you got to give them there. Shanahan and Purdy, this one's interesting because the 49ers beat us, but Shanahan and Purdy have been together for a year and a half while Purdy's been the starting quarterback. They haven't been able to win the big game. I don't know that I'd rather have Shanahan and Purdy than Campbell and Goff. I just don't. Like, Shanahan makes this list with any quarterback, right? Isn't that the way it goes? I like Brock Purdy. I like Brock Purdy as a quarterback. I just don't think he's a top five quarterback coach duo. All right, Harbaugh and Jackson, I you will get no arguments from me here. I understand they have not won the Super Bowl together. That man might be the best coach in the NFL um, outside of Dan Campbell. Don't worry. All right, and Lamar Jackson and him have seen so much success, success with now two different offensive coordinators and a lot of players rotating through. The Ravens just continue to be one of the best teams in football. That's a great combo. Here's the one that makes me upset. Here's the way in which they got it wrong. All right, they got it wrong with Sean McVay and Matt Stafford. Sure, they went and won a Super Bowl. Great. But there has to be an understanding of where they're at now. Right? They won a Super Bowl. That was three years ago. That was three years ago. They win the Super Bowl. Then next year, they don't make the playoffs. And then the year after that, they get beat by who? Dan Campbell and Jared Goff. And you can't sit here and tell me that that's a better combination right now than Goff and Campbell because we just beat them. And then we, and, and, and this is in a league of what have you done for me lately? I think an NFC championship game last year lends itself to a better quarterback coach combo than a Super Bowl three years ago. I might be wrong. Don't get me wrong. I wish the Lions had the Super Bowl, but it doesn't mean that they're the better team now. Okay? That's not what it means. And then number one, duh. All right, so that one absolutely belongs. So here's my question for all of you. Do you agree with the list? I'll show it back to you. Is there anybody that you feel is missing from this list that should be on this list? I always thought that was a kind of interesting question. Um, and, and a lot of it is just because there's a lot of either unproven quarterback coach combos, a lot of changes. I'm telling you when they remake this list in a couple of years, Herbert and Harbaugh are going to be on there. There's no doubt about that. Um, one of these rookies that was drafted in the top three will probably be on there, but do you agree with the order? Do you like where the lions sit at number seven? Should it be changed? Should it be different? Um, personally, I think I would move the Lions up to maybe six or five, and I would probably uh, bring back. I, I think if you if you're moving the Lions up two, you'd have to demote two. So I would bring the 49ers down, and I would bring down uh, the Rams. That would be my personal thing. But I can understand the argument for keeping the 49ers above because they just beat us. So that does make sense. Um, let me know what your thoughts are. See you on the next one. We'll be here all summer covering the Lions. You love football. Just keep listening. See ya.